Welcome to Southwest Florida Fishing Channel. Southwest Florida Fishing Channel. Today we're going to go over some of the basic items, especially if you're a first time boater, first time fishing in the Gulf of Mexico, first time going offshore. What equipment do I need besides my rod and reel? You know, what else should I bring? Well, number one item on the list, sunscreen. You need sunscreen. You need a good industrial strength sunscreen. None of that mamby pamby spray on crap, you know, that they use around. You need an industrial strength sunscreen that you can put on your face and without getting in your eyes, uh, this this particular brand here, uh, it's the full. Uh, it's, in, it's it's actually SPF 36 industrial strength sunscreen. Number one item. Number two, three, four, and five. It's just there's tools that you need if you're going fishing offshore. You're going to need some kind of contraption to grab that big grouper or that uh, sailfish or the shark so you can get a hold of it and remove the hook. Talking about removing the hooks, you need a hook remover. And actually uh, here in Florida, uh, the Fish and Wildlife, they actually require you to have a hook remover. There's different sizes. It's a smaller one. You know. So you're also going to need some wire cutters or line cutters with good spring action. You know, this is made for salt water. If you're using uh, if you're using the uh, fishing line, braided line, there's special scissors to cut braided line so it doesn't fray. So who would have thunk? Braided line scissors if you're using braided line. You need one of these uh, decompression needles, okay? So if you're fishing 85, 90 feet of water or more and you bring up a big grouper and he's all blown up and you're not going to keep him, let's say he's, he's not big enough, he's 19 and a half inches instead of 20 on a red grouper, before you put him back in the water, you need to let the air out of him. You need to go into his belly and the air comes out here, just a needle, just and then, you know, ease them back into the water. Another required item, if you get stopped by fish and wildlife, anywhere in the Gulf of Mexico, they want to see this, or something like it, and they want to see a hook remover. Those two items, they want to see. Here's another handy item to have. When that fish swallows the hook, you can go down into his belly, grab that hook, push it through. Hook, that's another hook remover contraption. You're going to need some needle nose pliers. Handy thing to have to remove hooks. Now I'm going to show you these Velcro straps. You can buy these at West Marine. I don't know where else you can buy them. It even actually says West Marine on them. But, uh, you know, this is a handy thing to have. Let's say that you're moving from one spot to another. you got rigs on your rods, uh, and there's weights on there, and there's hooks on there. You can very quickly put the velcro strap around the rig to your onto your rod keep it secure 
So when you're moving from spot to spot, the thing's not thrashing around is the word. Thrashing around. That's maybe the word of the day. So, you want to have a bait knife. This is a nice bait knife here because you could also cut line with it. So this end here is to cut fishing line. This is to cut bait. So a two-in-one. Nice handle. Okay. Glove. You know, if you don't wear gloves on both hands, at least wear it on the hand that you're going to use especially if you're catching live bait or anything the hand you're going to use to grab that fish with get a good fishing glove don't don't be cheap a fish billy club this is an ugly stick it's called fish belly why do you need this because sometimes you're going to catch a fish that you want to bring into the boat like a nice shark that you want to eat one that you can keep and eat you want to knock him out you don't want to just bring him into the boat you know so some people think that's a strange item to have no this is not a strange item to have on the boat so compact does better than a baseball bat here is a serrated knife, a nice big serrated knife. You don't have to sharpen these. It's got that serrated edge on there. So what do you use this for? Well, because if you want to uh, cut up some bait, some uh, you know you catch a lot of live bait or whatever, and you you want to cut some nice chunks of bait very quickly with that serrated edge, and uh, you know so you have cut bait to use. A towel. You need some towels. You might need plenty of a lot of towels. Okay, so there's a, a stack of tools there, you know, bait knife, gloves, velcro straps, needle nose pliers, hook remover, hook remover for down in the throat decompressor, wire cutters, special line cutters for braided line, a fish grabber. Okay, now what else do you need? You got all this stuff here. My goodness. My goodness. I gotta take all this on the boat? Yeah, you do. Yeah. You need, you need these tools, and when you're done using them at the end of the day, you need to bring them home. You need to rinse them off thoroughly, and you need to let them to sit out and dry, and not put them in any kind of container or back. You know, they need to be thoroughly, thoroughly dry. Now, we talked about the sunscreen, and get a sunscreen that you could put on your face that's not going to, if it does get in your eyes, it's not going to sting. And uh, that's what this is. I uh, don't know where, where, if you can get it, if it's available where you live or not, but you, you might have to try out a couple different, get a small bottle and try out different kinds, because maybe it should say... It's not going to burn your eyes, but you need it for your face. So, man oh man, what else do I need out there? Well, let's talk about that. If you're going out in the Gulf of Mexico, especially in Florida where it's sunny, 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 you need to have one of these new uh, long sleeve shirts. It's like, it's like wearing nothing. I know this material is uh, USB and so it protects you from the sun. So your arms are covered up, and once you get that on, you need you need one of these. 
you need one of these face socks. And this has multiple purposes. I mean, you can, you're going to be cruising along, cover up your ears. And what else goes along with this? Bingo! You need a hat that's comfortable, lightweight, covers your neck and ears. See what I'm saying? You know, that sun, if you're going to be out there fishing all day, you, you got you to gotta do it. So, I'm going to show you another tool that I just got. That I saw, I saw this online. Actually, I saw somebody else using this, but this is uh, to put your chum in. So this floats behind the boat. The chum, you put a block of chum in there. This ring stays up on top. Okay, so as you're cutting up bait and different doing things, and you got scraps on your uh, cutting board on your boat. You can just toss them right in there. This is right off behind, behind the boat, so you're constantly chumming. So, chum, chum, chum. I would say any fishing you do, saltwater fishing, you need to chum. Whether you're in, in deep water, shallow water, you need to chum. It attracts fish. It works best when there is a current. So, you know, couple times a day you have between tides, between high tide and low tide, it's kind of a slack time. Uh, this, this doesn't do, this, you still have a chum block in there, but I want to add to it. So if you're out fishing early in the morning, uh, before slack tide, you've got a chum block in there, whether you're catching live bait or you're just bottom fishing or whatever, this is going to bring fish up to the back of your boat like you'll be surprised. It could bring up schools of, uh, of cobia, yeah, all, all kinds of fish, uh, sharks, there's nothing wrong with catching some nice big sized sharks, especially the black tips are really good to eat. Some people say that they like the shark meat better than red snapper, because once you remove that skin, because you know shark urinates through his skin, that's why it's <laughs> so. Once you remove the skin, it's it's all white meat. It's delicious. So uh, this is a this is a must-have. You know, if you're going to go saltwater fishing, deep deep sea fishing, out on a boat, and actually, if you were fishing beer by a pier, off a dock. You could put some chum in the water, attract more fish. You know, because they could smell that. Some fish can smell the blood for shark skin for two miles away. So there you go. Get yourself. The, I recommend this type of chum net because you can. It floats above the top, and you can keep putting more stuff in there. It's it's easy sweezy. Easy sweezy. So. so if you have any questions or comments please submit them here on YouTube and uh, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel. Hit the subscribe button down at the right hand bottom there. You see that little arrow down at the bottom of the video and subscribe to the channel and uh, we'll hopefully uh, go fishing here pretty soon in the next few days and get some more uh, live action shots of uh, hauling in the big ones. We like to go grouper fishing. Uh, we like to catch some cobias. Once in a while we catch a sailfish here in, in uh, out of Stump Pass in the Gulf of Mexico, basically Englewood, Florida. And uh, it's just uh, on the border there with Charlotte County and uh, Sarasota County. But uh, parts of Manasota Key are in one county, parts of it in another county. But deep sea fishing, Gulf of Mexico, fishing out of Stump Pass on a 24-foot center console sea fox.
So this is Captain George uh, signing off for now. Please stay tuned for more videos to come. And uh, I have to reach back here and uh, turn the camera off because my remote quit working on me. So hopefully it'll get fixed here shortly. So thanks for listening.